We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so does anyone have plans? Do you have plans? Plans today? Do you have plans? Do you have plans for lunch? Do you have plans for lunch? Okay, good. Potluck? Good. Do you have plans for watching the Raiders game? Do you have plans for... Oh, I got, I, I, it's always tough when, when she's, our, our Denver, I think we only have one Denver Bronco fan. Is that correct? Jennifer, are you the only one? Wait, George, you're, wait, wait, hold on. We have been inundated with Denver Bronco fans. I don't know if I like this. Um, uh, do you have plans uh, for what you're going to be doing this week? Anyone got plans? Do you have plans for like a year from now? Do you have plans? Are you thinking about like where I'm going, what I'm doing? Yeah, well, we, we all have plans. And the hard part is when God takes the plans that we have and shreds them up, but it's great when he shows us something new, something different, something better. Uh, in just a moment, I'm gonna invite Chris up because I, I've heard bits and pieces of the story of the preschool, and it's always great to hear those stories because it's part of my history now too, even though I wasn't around 50 years ago when everything started. Uh, I get to celebrate and enjoy, and so some of you may not know a lot about the history of the preschool. And then after Chris speaks, I'm going to speak a little bit about the history of Searchlight. I know that um, someone a while ago had asked me to put down like a timeline of like what, how did Searchlight start, where did it go, and I never had done that, and so now I finally have put that into writing. Uh, Before the service, I don't know if you saw some of the pictures that were scrolling, Uh, those were all pictures from some of them way, way way a long time ago, some of them really current, uh, and then when I speak, I'll be able to show you also some uh, great pictures. Josh, I found my clicker, so I'm so happy, so yay. Um, so with that, I'm going to invite Chris to come on up, and she's going to share about uh, the preschool and all of the stuff that how this got started. Uh, It's really amazing. It's really incredible. And so let's give it up for the preschool director. Woo! There we go. How's that? Yeah, I think it's on. I turned it on for you. All right. We started with one classroom, which was in the living room at the end of the hall. We were the only preschool at that time in Orange County, so we quickly grew into six classes in the morning and six classes in the afternoon with about 220 students. As more early childhood schools opened and moms went into the workforce, we needed to offer daycare. So today we have five classes in the morning and daycare in the afternoons. Any organization that has been around for 50 years has many people that have played a role in making that organization successful. I want to thank some of those people this morning. For many years, our school was separate from the congregation. We had our own budget, and we didn't have much of a support system. And when Pastor Larry came to our congregation, he wanted to bring the church and the school together to become one. That vision changed the relationship between church and school. So Pastor Larry, we will always be very grateful for that and for all the support you showed us during the years you were here with us. Pastor Mark and Heather, when we started talking about merging with Searchlight, we were a little nervous. How's this going to work? Will it be a good fit with the preschool? Well, it only took one meeting to realize that this was a perfect fit. Thank you so much for loving and embracing our school and for always having our back. We appreciate all the support that you and the board of directors and the congregation show to the school. Nicole and Robin, our church office administrators, thank you for all the work you have done, not just for the church, but for the preschool as well. We are, we are the only church I know where the church administrators just become part of the preschool staff. They attend Christmas parties, birthday parties, and join in all the prayer needs that we have. So they do not just make our jobs a lot easier. They're great friends. Thank you. I want to thank what I call the guys around here. Robert, Paul, Mike, Mark, and Mark. The things these guys have done over the last year and a half are incredible. I'm going to speak just to the preschool. 
They have replaced all the lighting and all the classrooms, put new tile in each of the classrooms, gutted and then remodeled both bathrooms, installed a huge piece of commercial playground equipment, hauled sand and wood chips, and that's just the big things. There are countless other projects they have done as well. This has greatly enhanced our facility and school. So guys, thank you isn't enough for all you've done. To all our teachers and teachers' aides, past and present, that have worked at our school, thank you for your dedication and love to our children over these past 50 years. The reason our school has such a great reputation in the community is because of you. Each year, there are parents that went to school here bringing their children so they can have the same Christian environment that they experienced. My mom and I could not be more grateful for all the relationships we've developed over the years with each of you. There are people who worked here 30 years ago that still attend birthdays, Christmas parties, funerals, and baby showers. You are not just people we work with. You are family to us. Last but not least, the person who started all this, my mom. When my mom was about four and a half, her life was pretty chaotic. Her father had left the family, and her mom needed to go to work. My grandmother took her to the Lutheran church and asked if they would take her in their kindergarten even though she was too young. They did take her, but my grandmother couldn't afford tuition, so she asked if there was anything she could do for the church. The pastor said, well, you can bring your daughter to Sunday school each week and join us for church. My grandmother and my mom started regularly attending church, and that's where my mom heard about Jesus and his love for her for the first time. The pastor's family had twin daughters the same age as my mom, and they took her in as part of their family. My mom always wanted to be a teacher, and she did just that for 65 years. She also raised four kids in the meantime, and when my youngest sister was three, she thought back about how Christ had impacted her life as a young child, and God then steered her toward early childhood education. We lived up north at the time in Martinez, California, and she went in and asked the pastor if he wanted to start a preschool, and he said, sure. So school number one was started. My father was then transferred here to Southern California, and uh, we moved to Brea, and we attended Christ Lutheran Church. My mom went in and asked if they wanted to start a school, and they said yes, so school number two was started. My father was then transferred to Cincinnati, Ohio. Big mistake because, well, it's Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> but as Pastor Mark said, God's ways aren't always our ways, so we went, and something good came from it. My mom went into the church and asked if they wanted to start a school, and they said yes, and school number three was started. After one winter in Ohio, my father quickly announced, some people have to live here to make a living. I don't. We're going back home. So you've never seen a bunch of people pack so fast in your life, and back to Brea we came. We then joined St. Stephen's. And you guessed it, Mom went in to talk to the president of the congregation and the elders to see if they wanted to start a school. Those of you that have known my mom for many years know that she can be a strong personality at times. Therefore, the story is, she presented the information about the school and said, call me when, with what you decide. After leaving the room, the president of the congregation said, well, I'm not telling her no. Is anybody else going to tell her no? And the rest is history. School number four was started. And 50 years later, we are Searchlight Preschool and still, and still thriving. Mom also directed three different preschools out in Hemet, California, and worked until the age of 89. So because Jesus changed the life of one four-year-old little girl, thousands of children all over the country have heard of Jesus' love for them. And that's quite a legacy to be proud of. Now, my mom would be the first to say that all the glory goes to God. She's always telling us that, <laughs> you know. and. Uh, and that uh, she just followed God's path. And, and through his grace, all of this happened. And that's true. You know, we do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But we also wanted to commemorate this day as well. Um, 
we have a bench over here in the front. I don't know if all of you can see it, but um, this is a bench that us four kids uh, uh, went together and bought. It's gonna probably be out on the preschool play yard. And it's just dedicated to everyone, you know, that, that has uh, had a part in this. I'll, I'll read you what it says here. In honor of Carolyn Williams and lives dedicated to early childhood education, for God's glory, Carolyn established and directed St. Stephen's Preschool in 1971. 50 years later, Searchlight Preschool is directed by her daughter, Chris Williams. And the, the Bible verse on there is Matthew 19, 14. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. I'm always uh, grateful when, when we have a plan, but then God's plans are better and greater and uh, do just more than we could ever imagine. Uh, now I'm going to give you my story, the story of Searchlight uh, and how Searchlight came to be and uh, where it went to. Uh, it started um, in 1998 when uh, Heather and I uh, graduated from seminary, and when we graduated from seminary, I had a plan. And it was a great plan. Everyone's got to have a plan when you're coming out of seminary. So the plan was very simple. I would become an associate pastor of a large church, and then I would become a sole pastor of about a medium-sized church, and then I would grow that church or transfer and become the pastor of a mega church, because that's my plan. And that seemed like a good plan to me. But as you saw before, my plans are small and little and tiny, and God's plans are much greater. So I did uh, graduate uh, and ended up with my plan starting off quite nicely. I was the pastor, associate pastor of a, a, a decently large church in the city of Orange. Uh, but then in 2001, uh, there were seven of us that started talking about what does it mean to follow God? What does it mean to listen to God, hear his voice, know what to do? And so in 2001, there were seven of us that decided to launch this brand new church called Searchlight Ministries. It was the Houstons, the Mannings, the Inaways, and Pam Pratt, seven of us, that said, we think God is calling us to start a new church. Now, this is very difficult because uh, at that time, the Lutheran church was not known for planting churches. In fact, there were very few planting churches anywhere in the United States, and there were zero, zero churches being planted in the state of California. And so I felt this calling, and people asked me, they're like, well, well, what special trait? Because right now, thankfully, we have uh, church planting tracks. If you go to the seminary, you can train to become a church planter. And I said, well, I have absolutely no training whatsoever. And at that time, church planting books were really becoming all the rage, but I didn't read any until about three years after I planted, and I realized I broke pretty much every rule and made every mistake known to mankind because I wasn't following a book. I was following God because God's plans are better. So in 2001, seven of us decided to launch in a retail strip mall in... Uh, uh, come on now, what is this? It's flashing at me, Joshua. You're just getting, I don't know why it's flashing. I tested it earlier. All right. Um, yeah, can you uh, hit, hit, the, hit the, find a black background first so it clears that other background. Click that and then go back to that. So we had a retail strip mall. We were technically in Anaheim Hills, California. Uh, it was right on Orangethorpe Avenue. And on February 4th, 2001, we launched Searchlight Ministries. We made all the mistakes because what you're supposed to do is you, you're supposed to gather, you're supposed to have a Bible study, you're supposed to build up a core, and then once you build up a core, then you launch with your service. So what did I do? Well, I just launched the service, and I don't know what we're doing. We're just going to launch. And so we actually had this beautiful sign that was made. And it's funny, if you look at it, uh, that used to be our slogan, used to be worship at full volume. And I'm, I'm thankful now that I'm getting older and I can't hear as well. I'm really thankful for the louder volume. I think it helps me out um, quite a bit. Uh, 
And we had all these plans of what we were going to do there on Orange Slope Avenue. Go to the next slide. Uh, so I think you should have four. We decided to paint the walls green <laughs> because that's what church planters do. We're like, let's paint the walls green. We had plastic chairs. I don't know if you can see it. We have TVs that are up there. Uh, this, I believe, is a kid's message. And I believe... That's Heather holding baby Jacob, because at this point, Joshua, you haven't even been born yet, okay? So, because um, 2001, crazy time. All right, go to the next slide, so I, have, I should have four pictures. Yeah, we had these crosses on the side, we had the mixer in the back, uh, and then the next slide. Those white, Those white chairs, we still had a whole bunch of them. Do we have one more, Josh? Yeah, yeah go for it. Yeah, and so there we go. Uh, out of curiosity, I always like to do this. Every, who was here at that February 4th, 2001 service? February 4th, 2001. Now, some of you, Bob is upset because he's like, I wasn't at the first one, but I came to the second one. So how about February 11th, 2001? There we go. Okay, Bob, Bob can raise his hand now and get all excited because he was sad. He got off on the wrong exit, and because of that, couldn't make it to the very first worship service. Uh, we were there for uh, about two years. We ended up in a lot of financial difficulty because when we launched, we decided to launch trying to focus on especially the, the lost generation, at that time, Generation X. I've come to find out that every generation between 18 and 25 is the lost generation. That's when a lot of people just simply slip away from the church. But we decided to do that, and as we did, we got a lot of young people. We had some older people too, which was fantastic. But I don't know if you know, are, are those people from ages 18 to 25, about how wealthy are they? Are they... They're, they've got no money, none, none whatsoever. And we were paying a mortgage of $5,000 every month on this place. And uh, we got into some trouble quickly. Of course, I knew nothing about signing of leases and things like that. So on the lease, I was what they called a guarantor of the lease. Now, if you don't know what that means, that bad idea. bad idea. That means that if the church defaults on its payments, that means they could come after me personally and forced me to sell my house in order to recoup the money. So we found out quickly that we were in a whole lot of trouble. And so we finally started talking to the district and the district finally said, okay, we're gonna give you some money. And we're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And we got $100,000. Now guess how much we were in the rear? $100,000. But at least there was one thing that God did prepare me for being a church planter is that I am extremely frugal and very cheap. And... Well, I like to say frugal. Heather likes to say cheap. I don't know. Um, and so I went to the guy who owned the location because they were selling this retail strip mall. Uh, we went to try to buy it first. We didn't have any money to buy. I asked him if they would donate it. <laughs> they didn't want to donate it. And so we, I sent him a letter and I said, hey, how about we clear this whole thing up? Uh, I know I owe you $100,000. I'll give you a $20,000 cashier's check if you can just let the rest of it go. And he said, okay. So yay, we got out of that and we were there for about two years. Go ahead and move forward, Joshua, and then go to the next slide. And then we moved into what was called Cinemopolis. Now, it's changed its name several times, but at the time it was called Cinemopolis. We were just literally a block away. We had moved from there. We cut our rent in half. It was fantastic. The only problem was we were now in that wonderful thing of set up and, and tear down. But let me tell you, worshiping at a movie theater is fantastic. Do you see how big the screen is? Yeah. Like you could, yeah, you could, you could have trouble seeing and sit in the back row and everything is as big as can be. And you had cup holders for your coffee. We need to install cup holders here. That's my idea. And so we were there in this movie theater, and then, but again, set up and tear down. But we started doing some really good stuff. Go to the next slide. Uh, we started doing some great stuff with, um, uh, oh, that was the other hard part, was we had with the kids' ministry was, was in the arcade. That's a terrible, it's a terrible place to put a kids' ministry. Like, Jesus, we're going to talk about Jesus, and they're like, ooh, video game. 
and the nursery was in the hallway next to the bathroom. All right, but then go to the next slide. But here we also started to do some fun things. We started doing, with the setup and teardown, uh, we also did stuff at the block, which was fantastic. All right, go to the next slide because it should be black. And I think that, uh, I don't know, how is it looking, Paul, on the, the live stream? I think on those, does it, yeah, is it, is it, what is it showing? Is it now on me? Okay, sweet, because I want you to see me more. Uh, so there we were, at, uh, so we started doing uh, Christmas albums, and uh, we also started doing concerts at the block. Now it's called The Outlets. We started having these great plans. We had these wonderful ideas, and science worked out, and sometimes it, it was really, really nice. Some of the conversations that I got into uh, at uh, the movie theater, we'd be handing out these Christmas albums, and people would be talking to me about them, and they'd say, well, I don't know if I really believe in Jesus, and I don't know, is this, you know, and I'd get a chance to talk. One of them was really great because someone pulled me aside. They're like, Mark, Mark, come and talk to this person. They're a witch. And I'm like, they're a what? I'm like, they're a witch. And I'm like... What, what do you mean? Like they're just angry all the time or no, like they're like a literal witch. And I'm like, well, this will be fun. Let's go have a conversation with them. So I went and chatted with them. We started doing some of the craziest things because we had no idea what we we're doing, but we also knew this, that any plan that we had, God was going to take that plan and God was going to make it better. So we stayed at, um, the, at Cinemopolis for two years, but we were having some trouble. Because at that time, there was another church that was using the, the theater along with us. It was this little teeny tiny church called the Rock Community Church. Uh, it, was a church it was a church plant from Friends Your Belinda, a guy by the name of Pastor John Warehouse, great guy, used to be a baseball player, became a pastor and was very popular, and Friends Your Belinda was exploding in growth. And then there were some difficulties in the church, and so he broke off and planted, and I don't know if you'd call that a church plant. If you, if you plant with 2,000 people, is that really a church plant? That's like a mega church plant. It doesn't happen. But anyway, they were in the theaters with us, and it got, became very difficult because we were constantly being squeezed out of our space. But because of our generosity there, we actually were able to forge a relationship with John and The Rock, which actually pays dividends later on. So we decided to move again. So we left uh, Anaheim Hills and decided to come to the beautiful city of Fullerton. And that place was called the Chase Suites Hotel. Does anyone know the Chase Suites Hotel? It's not, it's not called the Chase Suites Hotel anymore, uh, but you could really easily see it. it was on 57 and Nutwood, and it was a big, giant, pink hotel. It is now the Double Tree that's right down the road down there, I believe. And there we are uh, uh, at, the, at the Chase Suites Hotel. We were at a 10-foot drop ceiling. It was very hard to, to put screens up. Uh, do I only have one picture there? No, I should have one. Uh, go to the next one. Yeah, so there, there's a set. I went through all the stuff, and it was a great time. But what was also interesting was while we were there, we started doing some other great stuff with our youth ministry. We were doing uh, incredible things with um, uh, campouts and beach bonfires and setting old Christmas trees on fire because we just did anything we wanted because we had no idea what we were doing. We had a plan, but God's plan was better. But it was, I thought it was really cool as I was going through all my old archives, I I came across uh, a picture because we decided to do this wonderful thing to help young women grow in their faith and it was this dedicated thing and then we had to have a, like a like a final ceremony and so we had a final ceremony can anyone tell me where that might have been at yeah, if you can see, the, the, the pieces of wood have been cut out that are dripping down, but that point right there is that point right up here, and I was scrolling through, and I even found some great stuff because we were in the fellowship hall and had uh, food afterwards. It was really, really fantastic. So we were there at Chase Suites Hotel for a while, and then finally there was this old uh, closed-down Lutheran church in Anaheim, West Anaheim, called St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Uh, and it wasn't being used. The pastor had, had resigned from his position there and had actually joined Searchlight, and we actually picked up some other members from that church as well, Henry and, and uh, Barb. We were very grateful to get a chance to know them. And while we were there at St. Mark's Lutheran, what was really fun was they had their sign out, and so all we did was we just peeled off the word saint and Lutheran, and so it just said Mark's church. And... So, <laughs> I did take a picture of it, but didn't stay that way. I think I have one picture up of that, don't I, Josh? Do I have one? I don't see it. No, you know what? It was probably because I, oh, no, that's St. Mark's. Yeah, so they had this, they had this cool suspended glowing cross 
That was cool. It was, it was literally like if a cross was hanging down here and it was backlit with stuff like that. And so they had a, 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 a place just like this. It was very, very cool. Yeah, go to the next one. What do I have? Yeah, they had a beautiful uh, playground in the back, and we had huge, we had this Easter service, we had kids showing up all over, we had kids all over the place, it was insane. Yeah, go to the next one, what's the next one? Yeah, there it is, yeah. So that used to be a bell tower, if you go down there now, the sad part, do I have one more? Yeah, there we go, Searchlight Ministries, there it is. Um, yeah, the sad part was, uh, after we had left, we had, uh, the, the property got sold, to a holding group that was in a property swap. Nine properties were swapped with the district so that they could reduce their debt. Sad part now is if you go there, the tower still stands, but it's all just a bunch of condos. Really one of those sad things. But we ended up having to leave that location. Go to the next slide, because it should be black, right? No? Yeah. Well, what was the next slide? I'm curious, what did I put? Oh, okay, yeah, go on, don't go to that one. It was very hard to find pictures for a lot of these things. So, um, so after St. Mark's Lutheran, we were there for several years, uh, and we had a very good time uh, being there. Uh, but then it seemed one of the difficulties was the, the majority of people were still more from this eastern area, Fullerton, Orange, Anaheim Hills, Yorba Linda, and West Anaheim, apparently because you go over a freeway or two or three, people had a hard time getting there. So we started dwindling. We realized we were losing some people. So we decided to pull up stakes again. And in 2009, we moved back to the Chase Suites Hotel, but it had been changed to the Holiday Inn and Suites. We were there for several years and we were doing okay. And then uh, we ended up uh, deciding to do something really crazy as our finance kind of got in and out, we decided to take a chance and move our worship services from 9.30 on Sunday mornings to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You, do you, you remember those times? Yeah, the 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, personally, I liked it because that meant I could wake up, I could make myself some pancakes, and I was still in my pajamas, and it was great. Uh, and we decided to try this because we wanted to, first of all, get a little bit ahead more in our finances, restabilize ourselves, and kind of start a relaunch. And, you know, because we had all these great plans. But again, God's plans are better. That's when I got a, a phone call as because the worship services were at three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, I was made available to a lot of area churches who were wanting people to come in and preach, and so I was able to preach. And one of those churches was uh, the church that I had actually started at, St. Paul's Lutheran in Orange, and they asked me if they'd be interested in doing a merge. And so I thought, okay, well, this is not quite the plan, you know, because my plan was by now, Searchlight would have been about a 2,000 member congregation. We would have planned a bunch of other churches, you know, I'd be a mega star, I'd be on a lot of TV programs, doing a lot of radio. Um, it'd, be, it'd be fantastic, because, you know, I've got a face for radio. Uh, so, as, but of course, these aren't my plans, and so we ended up in 2011, we merged with St. Paul's, and while we were there, um, I was able to, to do what I wanted to do, which was be a preaching pastor. Uh, well, things didn't work out very well in the merge, and as time went on, uh, we decided to uh, part ways from Searchlight, and again, some of you are our product of that particular thing. We had come and then we picked you up kind of a second time around. And so once we left St. Paul's, um, we, we decided to start off with these backyard Bible studies. So uh, we, we decided to start with building up a core. Like this is hilarious, the second time I launched the church, it's like, let's do it right this time. So we uh, built up this core of people. We're meeting in our backyard and this is great. And then finally, uh, we were able to launch and we launched at the Holiday Inn and Suites is right down the road for one service. And then, go ahead and move to the next slide, Josh, because that's where we then ended up in Anaheim Hills, Edwards Cinema in Anaheim Hills. So we were back with our big gigantic screen, which was fun. Do I have another picture? Oh yeah, there we go, look at that. Talk about a nice big screen again. <clears throat> it was a lot of fun and we're launching and it's really, we're having a great time once again. And then after we were there at uh, Anaheim Hills Theater, we then ended up at Travis Ranch Elementary. I don't have a picture of that, so you can go to the next slide. Um, 
So we ended up at Travis Ranch Elementary School, and we're enjoying this. And, you know, I have all these great plans. Second time around, it's going to be great. We're going to have this big mega church. It's going to be fantastic. Um, no, I, by this time, I had jettisoned all of those plans because I realized something really important, that you, are, you, should, you should have plans. Everyone should have plans. Don't grip them too tightly. Because when you grip them too tightly, you don't have the opportunity to see what God might be doing in your life. When you say this is it and no other, there's some problems that can happen. And let me tell you, there were times when God had to come down and literally pry my fingers off my plan saying, I've got something better, but you've got to trust me. So there we were at Travis Ranch Elementary School when I get approached by uh, a good friend of mine. We graduated from the seminary together. His name was Larry Bogardis. He's like, Mark, I think we should merge. And I'm like, that's the stupidest idea I think I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, I've been, that's exactly what I said. I said, been there, done that. Don't say the M word to me. That's like a curse word in my ears. Merge? No. He's like, no, no, just you got to think about it. I'm like, no, I'm not going to think. He's like, we should pray about it. I said, I don't believe in the power of prayer. And he's like, well, at least take it to your, <laughs> at least take it to your board of directors. So I'm like, fine. You know what? My board of directors, they love me. They, they support me. They're all just a bunch of yes people for me. This is going to be perfect. So uh, I go to the board of directors and I say, hey, you will not believe this, guys. There's this church and they want to, they want to merge with us. And they're like, well, we should pray about it. I said, no, we should not pray about it. That is stupid. Because I had a plan. I had another plan in place, and I was working that plan. But God's plan is better. God's plans are always better. And they're like, Mark, you should just pray about it. I said, fine. I said, you pray, and I'll pray, and we'll see who God likes more. And so we kept on praying. We kept on praying. And they're like, Mark, I think we really do need to talk to them. I think this should be kind of a good thing. But it's really kind of odd because a lot of you may not actually know this, but we had actually tried to merge with, at the time, St. Stephen's back in 2007. We'd actually showed up. We'd actually toured the facility. We actually looked at the fellowship hall and said, this would be fantastic. And at that point, uh, uh, St. Stephen said, we really need to merge. And I said, how about this? Why don't we live together in sin for a little while before we get married? And then we can maybe see how things go. And they're like, well, it's merge or nothing. And so at the time in 2007, we said no. And so we're coming back now because, again, God has a plan. I think God had planned this all along. I don't know if that 2007 thing was supposed to happen or not. It didn't. It doesn't matter because if it was supposed to happen, guess who still won? God still won because God still got us together. So we started praying. We started praying. I finally started saying, well, okay, maybe because I had such a grip on my plan. And God had to come with some very loving and amazing and godly board of directors and started prying my plan away and said, listen to God. Follow what he has to say. He might have something better in store. And I'm like, but no, I can't see it. I can't see how this is going to be better. And so we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. We talked with uh, Larry and I believe, it, it, forgive me if I've, I, because it's a, the recent memory now, but I believe that we actually tried it and then it failed. But then we tried it essentially the third time we took a vote and both congregations said, let's merge. And so we did. And it's crazy when I think about what God has done I can't tell you how happy I am serving here. <clears throat> when I think of the, the plans that I had and I look back 20 years ago launching this church called Searchlight, I could never have imagined how good it could be because I was only interested, sadly, in the ABCs. In a lot of church circles, that's what they focus on almost exclusively, the ABCs, attendance, buildings, and cash. And all I cared about was that. How many people were showing up, how many buildings did I have, and how much cash did we have? And I started realizing that's really not what's important, is it? I'm looking out at all of you. Some of you I've only known for a very short time. Some of you I've known since the merge. Some of you I've known since Searchlight began. Some of you I've known even pre-Searchlight began back in 1998. Some of you 
I've known since my college days. And I think about all of that, and I, and I was wondering, if I were going to look forward and see what I was going to have, I don't think I could have imagined this because my plan was, was futile. My, my plan was feeble. My plan was faulty. Because now how I get to serve is to be able to do some really crazy things. We get to do some wacky stuff. Let's try a drive through trunk or treat. How does it work? I have no idea. Let's give it a try. Let's create a Christmas CD. Well, how do we do it? I have no idea. Let's just try it. Let's do an outdoor concert at the block. Well, how do we do it? I don't know. Let's just try it. And I think of throughout all the years, all the things that we were able to do because we were unfettered from our plans. We had a plan, but we held on loosely because God would come in so frequently and say, hey, I've got something better for you. Give this a try. And lo and behold, crazy things would happen that are truly and honestly not because of me and not because of the staff, but solely and completely because of God. I don't know what plan you have. You might have an ironclad plan. This is exactly how it's going to go. And I think that's great. I think it's good to have a plan, but hold on to it loosely because God might come in with something better, and God might say, I've got something that I want to show you that is incredible, that you have not been able to see because you are not there yet. I feel that my time at Searchlight has been kind of like going through a corn maze. It has all these zigs, it has all these zags, but it's really interesting. I find myself so often looking down at this long row and I hear God saying, go left. And I look left and there's nothing there. And he's like, but you gotta move forward to move left. And you've gotta get all the way to the end. You've gotta do this and then, to, but I don't see any. There is no left hand turn. But when I faithfully follow God and I get all the way to the end, all of a sudden I get all the way up to the wall and I didn't see it because it was hidden. There's my left turn. And I realize this is God leading us along the way. Now, when I think of the future, 54, 50 more years for the preschool, let me tell you, I get excited. It was really exciting as we were redoing the bathrooms over in the preschool. Um, we had this thing, we, I forgot what it was called. We, had to, we just had to blow stuff out. And we, so we called up a plumber and just said, hey, this is what we need to do. And can you come and do it? And so no, we're calling all these people. And finally, this one guy says, yeah, sure, I'll come and do it. So he shows up. He pulls into the parking lot. I meet him out in the parking lot. And he steps out. And he goes, I went to preschool here. And I'm like, you are kidding me. He goes, no, no, the, the Christmas play is right in this building, isn't it? Yeah, I remember that playground. You got some new equipment. That's fantastic. Oh, I remember this back lawn that we used to play in. Yeah, the church is right over there, isn't it? That's fantastic. I'm like, that is incredible. When I think of what we can do with ministry in the preschool, it, it excites me. And I know that St. Stephen's has been a lot around a lot longer than Searchlight, so I'm only counting Searchlight years right now, but I'm telling you, I'm so excited to see what the future has to hold. Because as we come out of this thing that God has done in this world, has now positioned, I think, a lot of churches to be ready to capitalize on people who are looking for some stability, some safety, some joy, some peace in their life. So you might have had another plan today, another plan to do other things, but you're, you're here or you're listening online, and God wants to tell you he's got a plan for you. Now, your plan and his plan may be the same, and when they are, it sure does feel good. But if you've got a plan, you may want to hold on to it a little bit loosely because, because God might come in and say, yeah, I know that this is what you want, but I've got something better. And I can't tell you how thankful I am to be the pastor here at Searchlight Ministries Lutheran Church and Preschool. Let's pray. Lord, it's, um, thank you for your plans. Thank you that they're always better than our plans. Thank you that we um, don't need to often worry about um, what needs to happen because you've already got a plan in place.
And Lord, I can't even imagine what the next 20 years are going to look like. I have no idea. But all I know is I'm excited because it's not about what plans I have. I've got some plans and other people have some plans too. But we're going to hold on to them loosely, Lord, because we know that you are a God that comes in and has better plans. So, Lord, what do we need to surrender today? Because we need to stop and take a look at the past and see how faithful you are. You have been faithful to this preschool for 50 years. You have seen it through its ups and its downs and its ups and its downs. And it is still here and it is still going and it is still doing amazing things only because of your grace and sovereignty. And Lord, you are doing great things here in this church. Again, not because of anything we're doing, but because of what you do. And when we look at how faithful you have been to us in the past, how can we ever stop? How can we ever abandon you? How can we ever leave that and say, well, he's probably not going to do it for us anymore? How absolutely ignorant and unfaithful we often are. Help us, Lord, and turn hearts back to you because when we see your faithfulness and we see everything that you do and we see how great your plans are, we can only hope for great things in the future. And Lord, it's not going to look like what we want and it may not look uh, like anything we can even imagine, but Lord, you can do great and wonderful things. So Lord, use us now as your vessels to accomplish what you want and what you will in Jesus' name.